Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, Xavier gon' talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody voucher Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant Yo, 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 welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. I am host, Xavier, and before we get to start start the show, I'd like to advise all the listeners and the watchers to please subscribe, like, leave that five-star rating, a review, do all those things I would greatly appreciate it, and share as well, because this is about to be a crazy episode. I got my guy, he's been on the show once, about uh, a little over a year ago, and I had to bring him back, man, because he keep growing and going, killing things, and my guy, Donovan Ruffin, welcome to the show, bro. What's going on, man? I appreciate hey, you having me on. Definitely, again. Man. You're right, right. Again, <laughs> I, I I had to do it, man. The people they they uh they love the episode we did last October, so I'm like, man, we got to get this done again, make it happen, man, to start the new year off with a bang for real. So yeah. I appreciate you uh, taking sure. everybody and coming back home. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I you know listen to you guys' stuff, pay attention to what you guys are doing. I got mad love and respect. Thank you, bro. So Thank you. I know it was like when I first pulled up, it was like I didn't know what to expect. And then the podcast launched and I was like, oh, snap. I'm like mm. texting my homies. I was like, bro, you got you to gotta try to get on Xavier's yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It was, it was, it was uh, like I said, man, that was a crazy episode. People loved that one, man. But uh, getting right into it, man, like uh, for the people who may not tap into that first one, we got, you know, we get new listeners daily and stuff like that. Just let them, let the people know who you are and what you do. Yeah. So what's up, everybody? My name's uh, Donovan Ruffin. I live here in Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm a father. I'm a fiance. Um, I have a business here. Um, I'm an angel investor. I mean, I, I mostly do real estate. Uh, so I own a company called Equity Cash Offer. If you're in the real estate, especially wholesaling business, you probably heard of us, mm-hmm. seen us around. Um, but yeah, we're right here up the street, uh, Legacy West here in, uh, in Plano, doing our thing. It was funny. Uh, I remember, like I, I told just before, when I first moved to Texas at the, uh, December 2020, one of the first things when I would go to different places and people say, have you had Donovan on your show? Yeah, I kept hearing. I'm like, who the hell is Donovan? I keep hearing you had Donovan. And he's like, Donovan Ruffin. I'm like, no, nah, I keep hearing about him, though. And then I seen you at the restaurant one day, and I was like, oh, that's that's the guy everybody keeps telling me about. I'm like, that's, that's a sign that I need to reach out and send a DM. Then we, That's yeah. how we got the first episode done. Then I'll also hear people in real estate. I will always hear your name and your company. I didn't even know that yeah. that was your company, bro. Yeah. After it took me, I probably didn't find out till like two months ago, bro. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah. And I <laughs> yeah. Can, like, when I kept hearing the name, I was like, and then I heard somebody mention your name. I'm like, oh, that's Donovan Company. I didn't even know that shit, man. Yeah. It's crazy. That's, yeah. That's, that's, y'all going crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, we, we do a lot of deals. So it's like, I mean, especially in the real estate business, I mean, we, we close, you know, hundreds of deals a year. So it's like, we, we close the deal deals with a lot of people, you know? So, um, and we take pride in that, you know, we, we like to say it's like, you know, cl- we like to turn closings into lifelong relationships. So it's like, it's pretty cool, you know? How was um, 2021? I mean, what's, what's 20, 2022, excuse me. I was 2022 because yeah. I know there are a lot of people that in real estate, they talked about how the market was pretty much terrible and stuff like that. So how was business for y'all? Yeah, I mean, the first the first quarter of 2022 was crazy. Um, second, second quarter was even crazier again towards the end of Q2. Um, so it was about summertime, like June, July. Um, you know, the feds came in and started raising interest rates and we, the, the investing community didn't really see an impact probably for, um, like a month or two, um, when the retail investors hit it. Cause you gotta understand like when investors buy, they pay cash and then sell it on the market. So the, the industry in, in total started seeing a huge mm-hmm. hit, um, come Q4 just cause houses, fix and flips are sitting on the market. Rentals are just kind of sitting there for banks are going crazy, asking for different uh, additional qualifications. So yeah, the market definitely took a turn. Um, especially, I mean, since July to now it's down like 30% compared to what it was last year. So that's it's, crazy. it's a completely different time now. As a CEO of a company, what is it like adjusting when you have employees that are dependent on you when the market is completely just changing like that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if I um, mentioned it on the last podcast because that was back in like October, right? Yeah, yeah, October. So November of last year, we actually exited our last fix and flip because I thought the market was going to shift like that that winter and it, it just kept going. So I was just kind of sticking to my guns. Um, so we, we didn't really pick up any uh, fix and flips. So we our strategy was mostly just buying holds. So we'd buy property. If we put any work into it at all, we would hold it as a rental. Hold it. So we were the buyer essentially. 
um, and then we go to refinance with the bank and then just wholesaling. So we were actually prepared for this to happen. Um, yeah. A lot of people weren't, you know, a lot of people were putting all their eggs in fix and flips. Yep. You know, I know fix and flippers that were doing like 12, 15 fix and flips and imagine paying, you know, holding payments on all those and can't sell them. Can't so sell them. people are in tight spots um, just because they didn't really diversify their, their, their portfolios and investments. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been an, a challenge for sure. Adjusting, you know, we, we had plans to adjust even before the market started to turn. Um, so I guess, you know, uh, as a CEO, you yeah. know, we came prepared. So mm. we're in, we're in even better spot now. Like really? we were looking forward to the crash essentially. Really? Yeah. It was like, we pulled out, we were like, like hopefully the market the just fucking is... <laughs> like <laughs> people they, bleed in the streets. Right. They say know? that's what might happen uh, this year. That's what I'm hearing a lot. I mean, it's already happening right happened. before our eyes, you know, and like, you know, I'm not, I don't wish bad upon anybody, but like the market within itself, I hope it continues to go down just cause, mm. I mean, even though it's down 30% compared to what it was in, you know, May of last year, we're still up like 50% compared to like pre-corona. I mean, I, I mean, that's kind of being, I mean, we're still more, more right, right, yeah, right. the market's still significantly higher than before corona hit when the market started going crazy. Let me, let me ask you this, because as a CEO of a wholesaling company, so somebody that's starting up wholesaling, do you think it's smarter for them to try to go out, drive for dollars on it, be independent and do it, or start with a company like you where they could gain some knowledge, have a team, a culture and, and, and stuff like that. What do you think? You know, it's a good question. Um, I mean, it, it really kind of depends on like understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Um, like we have some of our staff now that used to have their own companies and, mm -hmm. you know, they're rocking for a couple of years and saw it more beneficial to be a part of a team. Right. Um, and then, you know, there's some cats that, you know, come get educated and, you know, do their thing and they're happy and that's all cool. So it's, it's, it's really case by case basis mm -hmm. on, on, specific types of people and, and how people like to work with and, and encounter with it within a team. Um, now, obviously I see, you know, firsthand with real experience with some of our staff when being part of a team. So of course I'm going to be more biased towards that standpoint, right, 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 right. but you know, it's like, um, like our company, we, we operate a lot different. We're not just going to, you know, invite anybody into it and, you know, it, we have like strict guidelines on, on being a part of that. But if you can put yourself in a situation where you can learn from somebody and add value to that person, absolutely. You know, you want to be, I mean, that's how you learn, right? It's right. way easier to learn things from people that have experience, especially if you can gain a mentor, provide the mentor value in exchange. That's it, super beneficial, super beneficial. How long, how long does it take <clears throat> you to the evaluation process to see somebody and know like this is gonna be a good member for the team, or you know like this will be a terrible member for the team. You can't do it. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 you know, me personally, I, I've been in business since I was like 20 years old, right? right. So, um, it, you know, people say you shouldn't judge people on what they look like <laughs> or how they act, but I, I mean, I do. It's human nature. Yeah. Man. It's, <laughs> it's human like, nature. I don't know why people yeah. say that shit. Yeah. So, I mean, even just on social media profiles, you can really see, you know, they're not going to be a good fit. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. They're just not going to fit our culture. They're just, you know, there's certain things that aren't consistent in their life and what have you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can, I can spot, uh, somebody that's going to come in and be a killer and who's not, you know, pretty like pretty quick, but you know, then again, sometimes we get sold, you know, so right. we like giving people opportunity too, and see, see what they can do. And, you know, sometimes we give opportunity and we underestimated them and they come in and start killing it. Start killing it. And then there's some people where they overestimated themselves and they come in and it's just like, yo, what's going on here? You know, mm -hmm. what's, what's the, what's the um, <clears throat> key in your opinion to building a, a great foundation, a great culture within a business? Cause that's a question that so many people mm -hmm. that start businesses, that's what they hope for. That's, yeah. what they, that's what they strive to do. And you've done it. So what, how, what's, the, what's some keys that people could take away and just take that and apply it with their business? Um, to be honest, I think it's really uh, the vision and the mission. Um, because when, when people are, you know, going to battle and racing towards a specific goal together as a unit, it makes everything a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people don't have that structure or that vision in place initially. So it's hard to like, uh, explain to you what's about to happen or what's going to happen a couple of years from now. And in situations like that, people are always looking for different opportunities. They aren't really focused and, you know, their mind's all over the place. So they don't really care to be around right. other people that they work with. Right. Mm -hmm. When you know you're locked in for life, you know, you want to make the best of your situation. You, nice. you see what I'm saying? So they take extra pride in, in caring for each other, you know, helping each other out. Um, you know, they're part of each other's personal lives and things of that nature. And, 
I mean, I think it really starts with the vision and the mission um, before you can even attempt to build a culture, to be honest with you. Mm. But then on top of that, you know, it's just obviously you want to, um, you know, your, your culture is going to be a definition of you and who you are as a person, right? So, um, I mean, me personally, I don't really like working with people that I don't enjoy being around first and foremost, right. you know what right. I mean? Right. So, you know, it's it, it kind of goes along those guidelines. Hey, is this person going to fit our culture and energy? Right, um, based off characteristics that you have as a leader, it's going to be a lot easier to build too. Mm, that's game right there, bro. And what what about um? Because I know I, when I talk to entrepreneurs, one of the main problems they do have when they are starting to build that culture is retaining those good people. Mm -hmm. So, as a business person, you've experienced this. What's some advice on how to when you do got that good person that's killing it within your business to keep them? Because oftentimes they start doing good, and you might not be able to financially have that money to keep them there, and they growing and growing they got other opportunities so how do you remain retain this person within your business yeah i mean the i mean uh the i mean what works for us to be honest and what works in, in the past i mean to retain especially good sharp leaders right. is equity mm. you know um and you you think about it and even you and i at this very moment we would work harder for opportunity more than we would work for money Facts. you see what i'm saying um, so when you provide opportunity for somebody to own equity in what they're doing, it makes the biggest difference in the world. Damn, that's key, bro. I think oftentimes a lot of entrepreneurs get scared to give up equity in what they got. Mm -hmm. A lot of they like, man, I ain't. Fuck that. It's because they're selfish. Mm. It's facts. You're, You're right. selfish. You're right. I remember I used to work at Sam's Club when I was like 18. I worked there for, I don't know, like eight months. They used to have the stock program where they would match an X amount of stock in the company if you invested into it. it obviously, there was a cap, right? It was like $2,000 a year or something like that. I'm like, it's $2,000 in free money, right? right? So I'd max it out as much as I could. You see what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it, it works a lot similar in a sense when it, even if you're a smaller company is to allow people to kind of own what they're doing because, you know, when, when you have real tangible assets and when we talk about people and leaders, um, especially high producing leaders, you know, they want something for themselves at the end of the day. Mm. You know what I mean? It can't just all be yours. Mm. That's, and I, that's for the listeners and the watchers. I want y'all to understand that's some real, real game for somebody that's been killing it. Cause we didn't, for the people that don't know that's watching or listening, cause we didn't, uh, on this episode specifically, we didn't talk about Donna, Donovan's background. He's closed over how many, over a thousand, right? At this point, nah, how many? Bro, we're over like 2000. <laughs> Look at me. Excuse me, yeah. man. My fuck up. They done did over two thousand. He done done over two thousand real estate deals, y'all. So y'all do the math on that. That's a crazy. Yeah, I mean, success. obviously we have big deals. We have small deals, right? We have, um, you know, miscellaneous type deals that are off, off springs where we make you know a thousand two dollars two thousand mm -hmm. dollars on. But yeah, we do we do pretty heavy volume. But obviously I couldn't do it by myself. I have a team. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got a team to yeah. do it. Two thousand deals. That's man. That's people. Big companies probably struggle to do that, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Doing that is a, that's a hell of a feat, man. And it's a lot of aspiring real estate investors and wholesalers that want to get to that point. That's probably hitting that 100 deal a, a, a year kind of stride. So, to hear you done 2,000 deals, yeah. it's like, what the fuck? How do I get to that point? Yeah. So I, uh, just this uh, 2022, we did uh, a little over 700. 700 deals. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. That's How many deals a month is that? It's a lot, that's bro. A lot. I don't even know. That's crazy. Seven seven hundred about about twelve. I ain't even gonna try to do the math, but I know that's a crazy amount of deals, bro. Yeah, it's that's, a lot. And that's just that's y'all strictly in the Texas. Only in Texas. I mean, we do some deals in in other um, in other markets for sure. Um, but yeah, ninety five percent of our ninety seven percent of our business is here in Texas. So you got yeah. It's no 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 wonder everybody in Texas know who y'all are. And <laughs> yeah. I always hear the name. It makes sense, man. Y'all. What's, what's even more crazy, bro, is like I'm extremely 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 competitive. Like I'm probably I think I'm the most competitive person on planet Earth, right? Talk about uh, it. Yeah. I want I want to talk so about it, that. It, yeah, it's like in the space, right? In the podcast space, the guru space, you know, the conference space. You know, people talk a lot, and you know, there's big ego driven people right yeah and i know for a fact you know we're not the biggest company we're not the biggest count company even in the county like i know people do really? more in specific counties in texas than we do all year really in a month really yes oh shit and so we're coming for the next this year <laughs> <laughs> so they aren't they aren't on podcasts and stuff right. like that i'm like man we got a huge advantage you know we have a brand that they don't have people don't even know who they are you know what i mm. mean um so you know, I'm excited for what, for what's about to happen, bro. And 
No, you should be broke. Cause are you? You're not even thirty yet, right? No, I'm twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yep. So yeah. So you so doing that at twenty eight? It'll definitely, it'll definitely happen. But I want to talk about being competitive. Cause I feel like this is a super. Um, I kind of touched on this last episode a little bit, but I feel like this is a super under um, value conversation. Yeah. Because I think right right now with the opportunity we have in society, I feel like it's extremely, extremely, extremely important to be a competitive person. But I feel like we don't have that many competitive people. So if you are a competitive person like you, I feel like you have a a crazy advantage. Oh, yeah. Most people just because you want to win that 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 desire to win that's deep inside you deep inside you is going to propel you to do so many things. But so many of us, that's why I talk about working out a lot, because, you know, working out, that's that's a natural testosterone. booster. Yep. you working out, getting that testosterone is going to breed that competitiveness about yourself. So that, how how important do you think competitiveness is in the sport of business? Um, I mean, the sport and business, I mean, obviously you probably read the book by Mark Cuban, you know, I, I forgot what it's called, like sports, of, uh, business is a sport, I think mm -hmm. it was called. Um, but yeah, man, it's just like, you have competitors in business. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I made a tweet, I like, probably pulled it up, but I was like, man, having a business is very similar to starting a sport, sports team, right? So you have, um, you have your haters, you have your supporters, which are your fans, yep. right? You have our spouses and mm -hmm. people that love us are our cheerleaders. Yep. You have your staff and your employee, which are your players, right? That's a hell of you got hell. your leaders, who are your coaches and your staff, right? You have your mentors who who are your, you know, um, box box mm -hmm. coaches that are mm -hmm. overseeing seeing things and that things of that hell. nature. And it works very similar, bro. It's like, why would I start a sports team to fucking lose? Exactly. It makes no it sense. Makes no sense. So it's like if I'm gonna start a team, I want to. I want the best team. I want the best players. I want to win the most games. I want to make the most money. I mean, it's just common sense, right? So, um, I mean, just know when you're starting a business, your competitor is thinking exactly like that, right? So it's like you're gonna start the game to lose. Or you're gonna start the game to win. Mm. Sometimes it's easier to be a part of a team that's already winning. That's already winning. Then just build something on your own, and that's that's bro. I I, I definitely agree with that, man, because. Being like, um, like I said, I feel like this is especially right now. This is extremely undervalued, undervalued conversation because there is a saying where people say, "Why are you competing with other people?" I know we've all heard that. Yeah, and that's like to be honest, it's it's a lot of bullshit in that because if you're not obviously we could compete with for ourselves first and for, first and foremost. But if it's somebody in a position, you don't have to hate on this person. You see somebody doing great things, it's like. Oh, I got to do similar things to get to this point. So yep. by default, you're naturally competing with this person. But yep. it could be a friendly competition. It don't got to be, I that's, hate this motherfucker. That, I want to see him exactly lose. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Exactly. Like we have, we have like our real life competitors who are like supposed to be like our direct enemies, right? Like we're boys. Like we. Really? Yeah. Like we're, we're tight because we know we're in the same game. Like we're in the same league. And no point in acting like y'all not. We're in the same not. league. You're right. Right. After the game's <laughs> over, what do the, what do the superstars do? They go shake each other's hand, take Instagram pictures with each other, stuff like that. It's the same concept. Mm. Right. During the game, they're ready to go to war. Go to war. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's just, you know. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So I, I want to, so at this point, being a, um, a, a, a high, a high entrepreneur, what kind of people are you, outside of the your work environment, what kind of people are you around on a day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I think that's that's important, too, to, to kind of point out, because I really don't I really don't fuck with too many people at all. I'm the same way. Like, my circle is small. Like, I'm about to get married. I'm like, man, who's, who's even going to be on my in my wedding? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's... Like, I'm being dead serious, right? But I think what's most important, and, you know, I spend a lot of time with my girl, my family. Um, I got a son now. Um, and those are my biggest supporters, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm super blessed to, you know, for them to kind of see what I'm doing and support what I'm doing because I think that's extremely important because I've been in positions in my life where even my family didn't really understand or see the vision just yet. And it's very hard to even spend time around them so sometimes mm. you even have to distance yourself from family it's like a season it, it's not like you don't love this person it's not like you don't like spending time around this person because you because you don't love them right it's just you have to make sometimes you have to make a sap, sacrifice and separation to go back and show them what you've done and and show them the vision and then that's when the support's all worth yeah. it yeah it's kind and of that's, fucked up. that's when you 10x everything yeah i think a lot of people they resent that because they're like, man, that's just so wrong. Why can't why why can't my family just support me from the jump? I mean, you know, I I, I really think it's because your family loves you so much. They're scared. They don't mm. want to see you fail. 
They don't mm. want to see you. They don't, they don't want to see you lose the game. Mm, that's a that's a other perspective. Right they're, now. they're they're going to give you their perspective off their personal experiences, right? Or experiences that they know of people that went through a similar path and failed. And it's not they're not doubting you 100 percent of the time because they don't believe in you. They're doubting you because they don't want to see you lose. Does that make sense? No, that makes perfect sense. And that's a hell of a perspective. I don't think I've ever um, heard heard that point of view before. Yeah. But it, may, it makes a lot of sense. But you got to learn how to filter it, too. Like, for example, I got an uncle. My uncle, you know, he's like an admin at this office in, in, in Dallas. Probably made the same amount of money for the past 10 years and is the happiest person alive. Really? Has a great relationship with my aunt. And, you know, he loves me so much. He always tries to give me business advice. And what do I do? I listen. But I don't necessarily keep that information in my brain. I filter it all out and I take what he's best at, right? Mm. So you can learn from everybody. I just take, I just choose to learn other people's best attributes of life and take that in, right? That in. So anytime my uncle's giving me relationship advice, I'm listening and I'm paying attention. Because it's, it's, it's working for him. Exactly. Mm, that's the gem, bro. Because a lot of times people will see somebody that's considered doing worse than them and it's like it's nothing i can learn from this person absolutely nothing exactly and they and like you said they might be excelling in other things that yep we all we all want to excel in but with that being said i was um i was i don't remember what book it was i was reading a book and it talked about how the 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 curse it was pretty much i'm paraphrasing but they talked about the curse of being a high achiever pretty much mm -hmm. saying how you can't have be you can't ha be great at all things when you get to a certain level of achievement. Like let's say, like in business, you're yeah. killing it, making millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Your relationship with your kids might suffer, or your relationship with your spouse might suffer, or your health might suffer. They were saying like you, it's pretty much impossible to have all those things at a top level when you are obsessed with going with, with your purpose. So I want to ask you, what is your thoughts and opinions on that? I think it's just perspective, man. Um, what you think is successful is different than what I think is Facts. successful. See what I'm saying? I know people out there making 100 grand a year and have the best relationships in all areas of their life. And they think they're the best they at all of them. <laughs> 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 so whoever That's said that quote is a fucking idiot. Mm. Hey, talk about it, bro. I, when I was reading, I was like, hmm, that's, 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 that's an interesting... Um but I mean, it has a lot to do. I think it has a lot to do with ego too. You it know? does. Um, I feel like people get over uh, egotistic, um, in a sense, and you know they get to a point where they stop growing in different areas of their life because they're trying to be better at a specific area in life. So obviously, there's some truth to that. Right. Um, but I think it's important to have you know a balanced life. You know, I it's agree, like, man. Um, I mean, I worked I worked hard for many, many, many years, man. Even before I had a kid, it's just like. You know, once you have everything, you kind of look back and you just like I've been in depression modes where I'm like, what's next? Like, what am I supposed to do next? Right. And sometimes you lose track of um, what you're actually doing when you actually achieve it. You know what I mean? And that's why the mission always has to be things outside of yourself, because you can only do so much for yourself. But, you know, the world's mm. a big place to impact. That's bro. That's a, that's heavy because I know I'll, I'll, that's that's common. Yeah. Once you achieve a certain level of success, you kind of feel like, damn, what what else can I do? But yep. then when you like you said, when you're thinking outside of yourself and mentioning and you mentioned the ego, and this is uh I feel like an important conversation as well. You know, especially you might have a e uh, a big ego when you don't have nothing, but once yep. you achieve something, that e now is even bigger. Yep. But we all know at some point that ego needs to be checked. Yeah. Cause, how do you yeah. how do you do that when you at a point that you've just been winning and winning for so long? Well, I mean, it kind of brings us back to the point where you can you can learn from everybody. You should never stop learning, right? Because that's how you grow is by taking in new information and gaining new skills. Um, and the moment you stop paying attention or you think you can't learn something from somebody else is when you kind of reach the point where you're just overly egotistic. You can't grow anymore. Mm. Um, so I always make it a point to continue to study, continue to learn, continue to meet new people, um, to continue to network so I can gain new skills. Um, so I can grow because it's not about me. It's about the people around me, you know, and right. if I stop growing, everybody else stops growing. See what I'm saying? So it'd be selfish of me to stop growing. It would be selfish of me not to pay attention or learn from other people. You know, it's not fair to anybody else. Mm, that's, hey, you dropping, you dropping some gems, bro. I love it. And for the, um, I don't know what, how, this just crossed my mind. For the people that don't know, you, uh. A reality TV star as well. <laughs> that was years ago. Yeah. Are you, so you don't do it at all no more? No, we don't film no more. Okay, no. okay, okay. So, but how did you, for the people that's watching, like, how did yeah. you even uh, venture into that? 
uh, some lady was just blowing blowing me up on Instagram, and really? I finally was like, "All right, it's not a bot, you know." You probably thought it, it was fake, huh? Yeah, she's yeah. just like coming at me like hard, like aggressive, and I'm like, "All right, you know, give me your contact information." I just gave it to my girl, and I was like, "If you want to do it, then just let me know." So we became actors for a short period of our <laughs> lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, hey, hey. So these, so you pretty much. How the, like do they really like want the real you or they are they gassing it a little bit and like no nah, bro none of it's real it's, none it's, of it it's all it's all it's a show bro you really know, yeah every single scene bro we had to reenact like eight, seven or eight times oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yo that's crazy maybe like ten percent of it's like real really you know, but yeah I mean it's just it's a show bro like me and my girl used to show up to the set and like we got to find something to argue about to like get the most views ever like I mean we we had a plan and came with a mission so yeah I mean uh you know sometimes I was like man we should have did something super outlandish <laughs> right 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 right, right. <laughs> that's crazy bro yeah. like we I feel like we had we kind of always had the idea that this the things aren't real yeah but then when you like if you see somebody you know and they start questioning like maybe it is real then you know yeah, I mean, saying? yeah, of course our lives are entertaining in certain ways, but you know, when you're when you're watching stuff on TV, you you're watching it to be entertained. You're being entertained. That's it. I think so. pe yeah, people don't really I don't think they I think they forget that part. Yeah. <laughs> people get people really get so like all the way caught into this and then invested. Like, no, this is you're like, man, you don't even know this was scripted. I used to I used to talk shit, especially like the fix fix and flip shows on TV. I'm like, this is so because I was in real estate at the time. I was like, this is so fake. I talk shit about all these people, but in reality, get behind the or get in front of the camera. It's like, yeah, this makes all the all the sense in the world. That's <laughs> like, crazy. Nobody wants to see what I'm doing in the and office. It, it's boring it's as boring, hell. It's boring. It's boring. <laughs> no, that's true. How much do you think that? Um, because that's that's a lot of uh brings awareness to you and what you do. Yeah. So do you think feel like it was beneficial with your company and your brand? Yeah, I mean I got a blue check mark. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's something. Yeah, that's worth I mean, something. I was like, babe, if I get a blue check mark out, I'll do it. That's know? worth something. So yeah, yeah. I mean we were kinda upset because we're still trying to get my girl one. It's like, man, that's so selfish. Oh like, yeah, that's right? like, oh they didn't give her one? Yeah, it was like I mean we tried, but I think it's her name so common. Um, oh, it's it's like more difficult. My name's like more unique. So I guess when, when people Google me or read articles or blogs, pick it up. It's a little bit. I don't know how it works, but has yeah. anybody ever? Um, because I, I haven't seen it, but I know I know you was on it. Has anybody ever ran up on you about something they didn't like that you did on the show? And was like, man, you bro, all the time, really? Yeah, all the time. I we had like a, a copy and paste thread, a text messages to send it to all our family because it's like, hey, just giving y'all a heads up, like this isn't real. You know, it's like because they've been <laughs> feeling some type of way about my girl and shit. It's oh, that's like, crazy. Yeah. That's some crazy shit, bro. I mean, like, bro, we were in. We, I mean, we were already engaged. We were pregnant, and we couldn't even post about it until like oh. six months after like a specific episode would air. It was crazy. And do you feel? Do you, do you feel like it was worth it? I mean, I don't regret it. You don't regret it. Right? I don't regret it. Yeah, that's that's. Hey, man, that's uh, that's just another chapter in your life. That's a story to tell. Yeah, I that's mean, how I be looking at shit. Yeah, it's, I mean, it it definitely gave. I mean, we gained experience, in some mm -hmm. type of you know a new new side of life, and it was. You know, we made the best of it. That's interesting. Is that something that um <clears throat> that experience in, in media and TV and entertainment was that would you do something maybe not similar with reality TV, but did, did that make you feel like you want to do something within that industry? Man, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it straight with you. Uh, man, well, my personality was really challenging because I had to like somebody was literally telling me what to do all day and tell me really? what to say. It was very hard for me because I'm like I, I don't like people telling me what to do from the get go. <laughs> really? And now so you're like, you really boss. challenging. Yeah, it was really challenging. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it was that was that was a struggle for me for sure. So it was like, I, I mean, hey, if we if we have an opportunity in the future, we'll, we'll definitely consider it. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to say no to opportunity if it makes sense. How long, how long did it do it take to, to well, film in like one scene? Just so people understand how like, like one scene or like one yeah like one si sm snippet maybe I don't know. 10 minutes on air probably eight hours that's fucking that shows you how yeah un, how fake it is yeah if it takes eight hours to film a 10 yeah. minute so we'd act it it'd be it'd be great it's awesome great job do it again and they have to film it from a different angle oh <laughs> uh, you serious bro yeah like we'd be walking i'm like oh my god this is crazy that's crazy bro i, I would have never known that bro they hey make i'm it not talking shit on it right I mean, right we're not documents to sign it's like obviously my non-competes over and right, shit right. like that you know so yeah, yeah we not we not we not <laughs> on it at all we just we just speak we just talking about yeah. that's, that's 
That's crazy, bro. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, they make it, you know, the edits and the cuts, just, it flows so effortlessly. You would never even expect that. That's, yep. That's very interesting, man. But talk about when we, uh, we a little bit, you talked about, you know, having a girl and a son and how that support system is very important. Speaking on the re- the relationship aspect, how important do you think it is as an entrepreneur to have somebody in your corner from that point of view, as opposed to being someone out here that's single and just chasing women, just going out to everybody, you know what I'm saying, in the club every night, all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, man, I think it makes the biggest difference in the world, um, especially if, like, if your spouse doesn't support you, it's a ticking bomb. Mm. It's a ticking bomb. I mean, let's face it. I mean, women rule the world, bro. It's like... I mean, since it is, my girl's not happy, and nothing's getting past the mood. Like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be no, dead serious. No. Now, thankfully, my girl's smart, and mm-hmm. she understands things, and she's, you know, she she learns how to grow and stuff, so she's not, like, boxed in. And I've been in relationships in the past where they have their certain ways of viewpoints and didn't, didn't like to change. And as you grow as a person, you just kind of grow separately, and it gets even more yes. challenging. Yeah. So I can I can definitely understand people that are in situations in life where, you know, maybe they're experiencing that in life. But I, I feel like it has a lot to do with um, personal development and, and networking with people that have more success in, in their marriage and in their business life. Um, we were blessed. You know, we traveled a lot. We speak at a lot of conferences and go to a lot of masterminds. And she was by my side for a majority of that because I was like, look, we're going to do life together. You got to understand why I operate the way I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And even looking at it from a business owner standpoint, looking at some of my staff. And I think that's one of the most important things, especially when you're building the culture is to get the spouses involved. So the spouses can see the vision because let's face it, if, if they don't have to worry about all the nagging and the headache and stuff like that, if they know, if the spouses know what they're actually working towards, does right, that make sense? Right, that makes sense. It makes all the support. Yeah, it, even, it makes the the challenges with with getting people's like you have double the amount of support when you get the spousal support, especially within your staff. Mm. And I learned that firsthand, like straight up. No, that makes sense. Yeah, that that, that definitely. Um, when you when the spouse see you, I, I remember being in the military. Now that you said, I'm like, damn, that's probably why the military do that. That's the common thing in the they military. Do? Yeah, they do that. When you're military, we have um, like those like t- like holiday means team means they encourage you. Bring your wife, bring your kids, everybody around each other, so they can see like what we doing, what we working towards. So when your husband got to go on a mission, yep. you understand why he's doing this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You're not familiar with who his supervisor is, who his coworkers is. You f- you feel like you're a part of it. That's exactly you right. Know? Yeah, so that. What you saying? I'm thinking like it just made it just like that's why the military does that. It makes yeah. everybody feel like okay, we're one here. Yeah, we're a team. Um, I, I think it helped a lot with our culture, and you know, even in my personal life, is when we started to really um, uh, bring you know really sharp women on, on mm. in, inside of our organization um, because it just naturally happens, right? So it's like women understand women better than men better I mean, than, for whatever yeah. reason. Yep. You know, and you got you got women chasing the vision and and having real results, and they're able to explain that in a woman's perspective with spouses if. From a, from like one of the male spouses, you see what I'm saying? No. So that helps a lot too. Man, women are like a women are like a uh, a cheat code when it comes to vision. If you if you got a good what is uh, romantic or it's just uh, not romantic, non romantic. If you got a good woman on your team that sees the vision, that believes in you, is willing to put any work in. Yep. That that shit is highly likely to come into fruition because they Facts. they they so smart and they're they're great communicators great networkers and they could bring you they could go get you opportunities it's it's a lot of shit that women can do that us as men we just can't pull off like they can when it yep. comes to i'm just talking business when yeah. it comes to business we just can't do it so for the people that's listening that especially the guys get some good women on yeah. your team man that's they, that's the cheat code that's the, that's really that's the, the real cheat code <laughs> no, like for real. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, he's like, it, I meet your spouse and I'm not, you know, I don't judge people, but I do. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's life. It's life. I know why you're in the position right now, exactly. G. Like, you got to exactly. bring your girl around more. You can't no. just, you know, just leave her at home and not keep her involved. Get like, involved in she's boxed in. You can't, you can't have, you can't situate a, a business life like that. You know what I mean? No facts. And then when she's boxed yeah. in, she's not invested. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had the saying, <laughs> I was like, man, all men need in this world is a home cooked meal. And a woman that believes in them. That's a fact, bro. I mean, it's true. Like, we're workhorses, right? But what do we do it for? Mm, we do, That's what we... Man, I, I, I think a lot of people don't understand that. But, the, like, 
That's that's you could take a dude that people will probably say, man, he will never be nothing in life. You give him a good woman that believes in him, like you said, that home cooked meal, that that um secure family environment, that dude to do things that you probably never even thought he was capable Bro, of. Bro, it's facts. Like what the women in our lives are our future mm. and our past. No facts. That's what no, that's, <laughs> that's, dang, that's what we. That's you're not what, investing into your girl, into your relationship. You're not investing into your future. It's no, like, you're it's not. Just the way it you're is. not because she's she's going to make your life a lot easier. And if especially if you're talking about um, having a family and having yeah. a family environment, you can't. It's going to be impossible to have that environment without being on some kind of accord with your woman. That's, it's like literally that's impossible. Now you having problems with the kid and all that kind of. Yeah. You want to deal with that as a person that's trying to grow in business. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of influences out there too. You know, there's there's a lot of people that go through phases in their life, and you know, and they're happy. That's cool, you know. But I choose to live my life a certain way, and you know, I'm happy. Yeah, you know and what it, I'm and you and you see how it it, it, it pans out. Like mm -hmm. there is a um, she, she waving at us and shit. There is a um blueprint a lot of times for for most things there's a blueprint yeah. but we as humans sometimes we like to recreate the wheel yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. we like man no nah, i see it work but i want to do this my way though and then we go down to uh, uh that narcissism kick in man <laughs> the narcissism <laughs> kick in that's why something you gotta like and we, uh, it's like we all have it but you gotta you gotta check it if you don't have no and that's another thing that a woman is good for because a woman will check it if she, she see you will. getting a little too i remember <laughs> i remember uh my girl when we first moved her and i was going out a lot and she was like I know you having fun, but you 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 feeling yourself a little too much. You need to scale back a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what? Then, <laughs> as I sit down, I'm like, damn, you right. Yeah. I am, I am doing a little too much right now. You right, but without that, with somebody, somebody, um, because most of the times, let's talk about it. Like your boys, they might not be, might be willing to say that to you as a friend. They don't want to offend you. They yeah. want an argument. But somebody like your woman, they more than likely not gonna be scared. They'll to be one hundred percent. They'll be one hundred percent. Keep a bug with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dudes like dudes. You know, we don't really like to be. It's uh, either your spouse, or your mom. Right. Like, oh, your mom definitely. Yeah. Tell you. My mom, she'll tell me quick. I'll be like, damn, mom. Yeah. Chill out, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, or your that, daughter, if you got one, you got yeah, one coming. Yeah, on I got one. I got, I got one coming up. So that's that. like, daddy, your breast stink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids. Don't, <laughs> hey, kids got no filter, man. You be like, damn, it do. Let me go. Let me go fix this up real quick, right? But um. So talk about, like, on the last episode, we was talking about, like, uh, ways to ensure that people, have, the listeners have an amazing 2023. Because there's a lot of things that people say coming up. They say economic collapse yeah. or other, all the other crazy stuff. So in your opinion, what are some things that people can do this year to make sure they have a great year? Yeah. Um, I feel like people lose sight of the fact of how you actually make money in business in general. Um, how we make money in our business is to solve problems. Mm. What, what's about to happen is people are going to have more problems. Mm. And as a business owner, you should be preparing yourself to solve those problems right. so you can make an income. You see what I'm saying? Um, I mean, if it's a product or service, find a way to help people, especially in a down market, um, and do it ethically and eternally, right, outside of yourself. And I, I think you'll be fine. Now, granted, you know, it, hey, you know, look at billion-dollar companies. I mean, how much money did Twitter lose just last year? Yep, they billions. Lost they lost billions. And then Elon Musk still comes in and pays $44 million for a negative negative profitable negative company problem. i'm like how does that even make sense right? right but i mean it's just this is the name of the game right so it's like i've had conversations with like some of my students for example who's going through tough times or what what have you and i'm like the only way you're going to lose is if you quit right now's the time to strap in because you're going to learn things in a bear market that is a skill set that is going to be irreplaceable mm. like once you make it through a bear market you you will always be in business. You will have that experience. Anybody can make money in a bull market. You buy, buy something and it'll go up in a couple months. Cool. But it what happens genius. in the bear market? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that is going to separate the men from the girls, the boys mm -hmm. from the men. Boys from the men, yeah. Um, and it, it, it's, it, to be honest with you, it's a transfer of wealth right now. You know, um, the people that can come in and solve problems, like in real estate, for example, where you know, our cash receivables, like we'd get paid on properties, you know, within 90 days because fix and flips and wholesales and stuff like that. Strategies changed a lot. We're doing a lot more buying holds. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not making all the money right now, but we're capturing equity. Definitely. And then it's going to 10x when the interest rates come back to normal. I mean, we still make a little bit in cash flow, what have you, but we're not making huge slicks right away. Right. It's going to take time, right? And we're preparing ourselves to do more of that because that's what's going to happen in a bear market. Taking sense. advantage of opportunity. I mean, I don't know a single investor today that seen the 2008 crash and 
regretted investing in that crash or they wish they would have invested in that recession, right? Now is the time to take advantage of opportunity. But you got to look at it from a long-term perspective. A lot of people come into the game and seeing the cash returns really quick and they get spoiled and they see unrealistic expectations and you have to think of a a long-term play, right? And that's, and that's, I feel like is the curse of a bull market because especially as a beginner, because you think this is normal. It's going to be like this forever. Yep. And then when that bear market hit, it's like, oh, shit, that wasn't normal. Yep. How do I adjust? How do I win in this market? Because like you said, everybody is a genius in a bull market. Yep. It's easy to win. You could just yep. throw a dart at something and you you going to win. But when it's times like this, it gets harder. You get to that experience, that character builder and all that shit. So, yep. Oh, that's facts, bro. I mean, we've had hard conversations even with some of our staff just because, you know, they had some bad months um, compared to what they're used to making. And I was like, I mean, first of all, you're making more than what you would make anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere else. Working, right. um, but then on top of that, you got to understand the, the, the situation at hand. Like we are taking advantage of this market um, and we're going to adapt. So, I mean, in real estate, for example, it's changing from a seller's market to a buyer's market where the sellers used to be the hard uh-huh. to get right now the buyers are hard to get so it's just the change of the direction of service so it doesn't really make a difference for us i mean i I believe wholesaling was invented during the recession Mm, uh, (laughs) you got contracts and options i'm willing to bet it was revenge during the recession that makes that makes a lot of sense i want i want to ask you about something that you um tweeted i'm trying to pull it up real quick because i feel like this is uh this is this is some uh game right here as well i want it says uh do not hire family members, regardless of how much you want to help them, help them in different areas if need be. So yeah. just talk about that and break that down. I think it goes from being a mom and pop shop to being a legit organization. Company. Yep. Um, so you look at mom and pop shops. I mean, it's cool. It's fine. Dandy. But I mean, it comes a point in your life where you have to grow beyond that. And it's no offense to your family um, and what your family believes in and what they want in their life. That doesn't mean you love them less. Right. Um, I feel like people love their family so much and they believe in their vision so much. They want to see their family take capture and in, in the winning opportunity. But unfortunately, you know, you can find somebody better for that seat that is more talented, more skilled, and that's willing to listen to you even more if it's outside of your family. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Um, it goes back to, you know, your family loves you so much, but I mean, you have to understand everybody has their flaws. I wouldn't risk, you know, bringing a family member on into my company and damage that relationship um, because I need something from them or something of that nature. You know what I mean? So I would say, you know, it's a, you can hire family members. It's great. If it works for you, that's awesome. Um, But when you grow to a certain point, you're going to realize, you know, sometimes it's not worth having those negative conversations with those family members. Sometimes it's worth keeping that separate outside of business so you can continue to have that support. Have that relationship. If you really value that relationship, you're going like, you're going I understand completely what you're saying, but a lot of times I feel like people want to go, they go the family member route or close friends route because it's cheaper, just being honest. And it's easier. It's easier. It's, they feel like it's easier. They, right. They feel like it's easier to, but on the back end, it burns yeah. them. Yeah. Because if something happened, they have to have a difficult, difficult conversation with this family member. And now it kind of, naturally, it's going to put some kind of strain on a relationship. Yeah. Just, I mean, I like, I mean, I have my certain way of managing people and it works. Right. And when, I, when it goes to, you know, managing my family members like that, it doesn't work because they're used to they know who I was when I was a knucklehead at 10 years old or what have you. And it's not like they don't love you. It's not like they don't want to listen to you. It's just, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I remember um, when I was in high school, I had this business and I had and I was making good money. And I had this friend of mine. He was my best friend at the time. He kept begging me and begging me. He like, bro, bro, just let me do yeah. it. Come on. And I was like, bro, you don't understand. Like, I want to, as bad as I want to say yes, I can't do it because if you fuck up, you're not a, first of all, as soon as I hire you, you just, you're not my friend no more. It's employee first yep. and then my friend. So if you fuck up, I got to come at you. you I'm not going to come at you like a friend. And that's yep. going to put a, I value our relationship too much to put a strain on that. I was exactly only like right. 14 at the time. Yeah. So I didn't do it. Yeah. But so that's something that I always understood. And I kind of try to stay away from because I know at the end of the day, if the, it's business. Things can go yeah. bad. I don't want to have this conversation and put this strain on our relationship. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a real example. You know, my girl worked with us in, in the company. Right. And it, it just felt like my life was all work 100 percent of the time. Not only yeah. that, you know, it's like I put pressure on my people, right? right? So it's like I got to, you know, it's like 
I want to live a life outside of work. I want to live a balanced right, life. Right, right. You know, so like it's separated. Yeah, I feel so much better that you know she has her own business. I got my own business, and you know when we're together, we're together. We're chopping it up. You know, we're not talking about work. You need that break. Yeah, you, you need, need that balance. That. No facts. I think a lot of times, uh, especially business people, don't understand, especially in the beginning, how valuable that balance is. Like you may want to work all the time, but it gets to a point where you be like. When I get outside of work, I just want to just have regular. I don't want to talk about work right yep. now. Regular conversations and all that stuff. Yep. And it was another. It was something else. It's a couple of things I see you tweeted. I want to talk about the second one was you said you could have multiple LLCs, but you will be a salesperson slash employee for all of them if you do not have staff. Yeah. So break that down as well because that's some game right there. Yeah, it's like I have friends. It's like I own twenty one different businesses. Right. He's got twenty one different business cards, and they're all his name. I'm like, how does it make sense? That? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's crazy. That's what it, that's what people are doing, bro. They find a, a product to sell and they make an LLC behind it or a service, what have you, and you know it, it, it works for them. So I mean, that's that's cool. But I mean, it's a lot easier, you know, building something that works in one company, and then once you I gain agree. traction and gain that experience, and it, it can operate without you, then you can open up and and look at different ventures and and put your all into that. You know, I've, I've chased multiple rabbits before, right? I, I used right. to run two different companies at the same time before I went all real estate. And I can tell you firsthand, I was chasing two rabbits. I was giving my people 50%. I was putting in 50% of the effort and I was drained. Um, and not only that, I was doing the same thing over and over consistently. It was like, why can't I grow? And I'm like, God, please tell me. Tell me what, is, what it's going to take for me to, to make a bigger impact. What, what is it going to take for me to make more money or to hire more people or to, you know, do more sales or what, whatever? And, you know, it, it led me to the, I had to make a sacrifice. I had to choose one. I had to choose what I enjoy to do the most. I had to choose what I was going to make the most money in. And I had to choose something over something else. And I had to make a sacrifice to give my people 100%. I wanted to give myself 100%. Because you, you can't, do you think it's possible to win at a big scale in business without giving 100%? No, it's not. It's impossible. <laughs> I mean, Elon Musk is running Twitter by like single handedly right now until yeah. you can find somebody to replace himself. Replace him. I mean, it's clear as pudding. I mean, the instructions are there. You just got to listen, pay attention. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Find a product that you like to sell and sell that and sell the most of it. You don't have to go sell 21 different ones. No, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's game, bro. And I got, I think this was my, uh, the last regarding tweet question that I wanted to ask you. You tweeted. My tweet's good. I yeah, going yeah. some deep thought before nah, I tweet. Man, yeah, y'all, you, you, you talking to, I'm like, man, people need to pay attention, man. You said, um, and this congrats on the way on the Rolls Royce, the color. Oh, uh, thanks, The color, man, that shit is fire. But you said, apparently, if you buy a Rolls Royce color, then you'll save 100000 plus net and taxes how is this not discussed more so yeah well i realize not everybody's in that situation when i tweeted that <laughs> <laughs> i was right. just in a bad spot mentally right we talk about these phases and you know i was doing the books talking to my cpa and i'm like fuck like because i bought we buy real estate i thought we bought enough to offset taxes wasn't enough right and going into a recession i'm trying to stay cash positive profitability wise um, and hold cash reserves without like putting into an insurance mutual fund so we can control the money a lot a lot more efficiently, especially through a recession. Um, so I was like trying to find the best angles and I was just like, all right, well, it's the last day of the month. <laughs> Woke up and I'm like talking to my homies and talking to everybody and it's just like came to the common conclusion that I needed to buy a car, like an expensive car. Like I need, mm -hmm. I mean, I still got to pay taxes, but I, I already bought an Escalade a couple months ago, thought mm -hmm. it was going to work. Wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. Um, because it's over 6,000 pounds, by the way, and I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the it, it made 100% sense where I'm actually positive, like I gained profit by buying a colon in That's in crazy. real life. I could either, uh, January 1st or whenever the taxes are due, I would have had to stroke a check to the government for $140,000. I mean, I'm obviously pay a lot more now. Or I could buy a colon in for $350,000 plus tax. So it was like three eighty. dollars so I take that 380 off of my net income mm -hmm. that's taxable, and I would have had to pay $140,000 in taxes. So the colon is not going to lose $140,000 in value, no value absolutely not. for years and years, mm -hmm. right? So it makes more sense to buy a colon than to go into the new year without the colon in. 
<laughs> that's that's crazy. So, it's so crazy how it works. It's crazy, like bro. Yeah, taxes is a taxes is a crazy game. Just I thank God you're not in California. <laughs> bro, and they will come for you. You know, no. this year, you know, we really started doing buy and holds and, and refinancing houses into rentals and we were doing one specifically, and mind you, I've been making money for a lot of years, mm-hmm. right? Since like 2015, I made my first million, but moving on. So I thought it was the best idea back in the day to get on a payment plan with the IRS and, and pay taxes over time and collect the, or pay them an interest rate or whatever, like three, 3.5%. I was like, cool, that's great. And it's like, okay, there's penalties on there. I was like, okay, that's great. So making the payments consistently, I'm not like in default or anything. They slap a lien on one of the houses mid refi. Like we're trying to get a loan through the bank and there's all of a sudden $150,000 IRS tax lien on my house from a 2017 tax bill that I've been paying. I'm like, I'm on time. I'm not late. I'm giving you guys money. And the IRS is like, it's insurance. <laughs> I'm like, what they said it's the insurance. hell? So I literally had to stroke a check to the IRS for the full amount to refinance with the bank um, and mind you, there was like $40,000 on that bill with interest and penalties. Now, knowing now you can actually negotiate that if you're going to pay it off, but you know, we have investors, right? So it's like, I'm not, I, I told my investors one thing, I'm going to stick to my word. So it's like, I'm just going to pay the taxes to make sure the investors get their money back so we can refinance. Right. So yeah, I mean, I guess I have tax, tax trauma where it's right. just like, now I'm not going to go into a new year and paying a uh, heavy tax bill because they will come for you. And I know there's a lot of people that are getting money, listening to this podcast that haven't done their taxes. Figure that shit out now, because they'll come for your ass. Yeah, I got a, a couple about about um, some months back. I got a I got a big bill. They sent me. Yep. I said, what the fuck, man? So you, yeah, you, no, you're definitely right, man. You you it's the tax game is so it's so interesting and crazy. And I and I I like to advise all entrepreneurs to please like study and figure this shit out because it's a crazy crazy game. But it, on the other side of that. If you really understand it, you get the right team, get the right CPA. Yep. There's are there there are also a lot of loopholes too. There is. So there's loopholes that I knew about that I didn't do. Like I, I had to buy a calling because I was irresponsible. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> that's too that crazy. That sound. I had to buy a Rolls Royce because I was irresponsible. Like I was on the phone with my CPA. I called like four different people, bro. I'm like explain the situation, explain my options, stroke the check to the dealership. Like go do it. And I'm like. This is crazy that I even have to do this. That's, that's, that's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, it, it's nuts. At least, you get, at least you get a beautiful car out of it. Yeah, so now, you know, I mean, we're starting like a, a, a company fund, right? So now I'm going to essentially kind of like a hedge fund for, for me and my staff to fire, bro. essentially invest into because a lot of my staff is making good money now. Um, and they have tax, they have to pay taxes too. I'm like, shit, you guys don't have to pay anything in overhead and they're still coming in making six figures. But now they got to pay taxes. So going into next year, we're not going to have these problems. So we're looking forward to this market the continuing market, to fucking yeah. tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hope shit. people are bleeding in the streets. I'm going to be there with band-aids, bandages. Hey, y'all, that's that competitive spirit right there. That's what that is. Y'all, y'all, y'all better definitely um pay attention to all y'all people that's lazy, lack motivation. Because it's really not. Let me. This is my final question for you, by the way. What you think about... People always message me and shit about motivation, how they don't feel motivated or blah, blah, whatever the hell. I'm like, man, why don't y'all understand? Most of the days, I don't feel motivated. Yeah. There's a, at it's seven days a week, I'm going to be real. It's probably two days out of seven that I actually feel like motivated and like inspired. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm just doing it because I got these systems in place and things are like on autopilot at this point. Yeah. So talk about like um just that thought process that people have when it comes to like motivation. Um, I think for me, I like, I like challenges, right? Right. Um, and if I don't have challenges, I get bored very easily. And I think that's where the lack of motivation comes from me personally. Um, so I always make it a point to learn a new skill and learn the skill, automate the skill, and then, you know, put somebody in a role need be like right now I'm learning. So I'm learning, I'm teaching myself how to code right now. Like I would have never bro. fucking thought never did it. now I have to hire a software engineer because I don't know how to do this shit and I know I don't want, want to. Right. So now I'm motivated to work That's and crazy. figure this shit out. Yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, you know, challenge yourself. Yeah. If you're really good at what you're doing and you got, you got your stuff automated. That's great. That's awesome. There's so much more you can do for the world. You're right. You're right. You're definitely right. Like you're being selfish right now. Like there's, there's so much more impact that needs to be be done done. god said okay you're automated because i need you for something else i need you for something bigger you already figured that out like you already passed the test in the job here's more he's gonna put more on your plate and some people look at their plate i'm stuffed nigga i'm starving i'm starving 
Like, give me more. Give you, damn, I love it, bro. I, man, no, that's that's real, man. That's that's like I said, like I said in the beginning, that's that 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 um fire and desire that's within you that I feel like you can't you can't um it ain't artificial. You have to you either have I feel like you either have to have that in you or not. I don't know if there's a way to I like like for me personally, like I said, I wake up at five in the morning every day. When I wake up at five, I don't want to fucking get up. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like. I gotta get up. I can't just sit here. I have to, cause I how I look at it, I'm like, man, I got it's 24 hours in a day. I gotta get up. I gotta get. I gotta get started working, cause if I don't, I'm in competition with some people. Yeah, they gonna have hours ahead of me. They gonna have. If I wake up at nine, if they woke up at five, they got four hours ahead of me. Yep. Now nah, fuck that. I gotta get up at five, just in case if they is sleeping, I'm already working. I'm yep. up. I'm in the gym. Then I'm getting to work. So. Yep. No, nah, you're right, bro. That 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 competitiveness competitiveness will take you a long, long way. Yeah, I mean, back back to the motivation thing, man, because, I mean, there's times I, f I feel like I'm not motivated. I mean, right. there's seasons I take, like, six months off. Right. And to really get me out of that is just kind of, I think what it really is, bro, is seeing seeing what it is that, that that's about to happen if you do the task and feeling it. Feeling it. And you mm. feel, have that, like, you see it in real life, right? And when, when, you, when you sense that energy once it's achieved... You know, it, it, it makes sense to just get the job done. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes people lose sight of, like, what's next after that. See, they lose sight of that vision. And then that, they don't really have anything to work towards. There's no reward. Why would I go to work if I'm not going to win anything? No, that's true. What if there's no games to play? That's true. There's nobody to play against. Damn. But that makes sense. That's why you see so many people when you talk about people that have jobs that are extremely low income, that they have low energy, like super low energy or, you know, lethargic or just careless with the job because there's no win in the end of that. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense. I never even thought of it that way. Yeah. It's like you got to, you, you got to, you got to, you got you to gotta see into the future. You got to be like Raven. <laughs> <laughs> For so real, bro. It's like, it's like a vision. It's like, holy crap. Like, it's, oh, you're it's, right, yeah. bro. You just gave me some hella perspectives. Like, I, I I feel like the way you broke it down is like they make it makes perfect sense. I never looked at it that way, but it make like I said, it makes all the sense in the world, man. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Like man. you're you're about to have a baby right now, mm -hmm. right? And you could already visualize your baby in your arms. Yes, and you're excited for it. Yes, right. You're preparing prepared the nursery. Yes, got everything painted, yes. crib set up already. Yep. Everything because you felt the baby in your arms. I could taste it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could, and I you could, can physically I could see, see it. it. Right. Oh, it's coming. That's a, oh shit. The recession is coming. <laughs> you can apply that to everything in life too. Like yes. That mentality. I can see. I can taste. It. I'm preparing. I'm putting the right things in place because I'm preparing for this. Yes. Hey man, y'all watching? Do not let what he just said go over y'all head. He even though he was talking about me and my personal life and my upcoming child. This can go into anything in life that you want to accomplish, that you want to do. If you just mentally prepare yourself, and some to some people that should sound cliche, but you mentally prepare yourself and you act like it, you can see it, you can taste it coming, you act on it. And that shit more than likely going to come into fruition if you're really acting on it for real, taking the right steps. It's facts, bro. Damn, you just dropped it, bro. That, I hope that's not going over people's heads. Cause that's the gym. I mean, it will. It, it will, won't. right? You know, if you ain't ready for it, if you if you're not ready for it, it's gonna go over your head. You gotta be, you know, what I'm saying, it's gotta be for you. You gonna understand exactly what we talking about. It's for the real ones, right? Right, right. <laughs> no, straight up, straight up, bro, for real. And but before we wrap up, bro, I wanna say, man, I uh, I appreciate you taking the time to come up and get some game to my listeners, sure, give some game to me as well. This was an extremely valuable episode, bro. And I know uh, my listeners and watchers, they are gonna take a lot away from this so i want to say i thank Appreciate you for coming it. out to do this man yeah thanks for having me bro yeah definitely and before i let you go do you mind plugging all your stuff where people can find you follow you everything yeah so uh you know you could just google me donovan ruffin my social medias will pop up um don the donovan ruffin on instagram donovan ruffin on twitter and facebook i think it's pretty much all i use i mean i'm trying to get into tiktok but they're, yeah, yeah, they're struggling to give me a blue check so i'm my ego's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, get on this. Get on it. Get on it uh, before they take that shit down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh so yeah, I mean you can follow me, you know, shoot me a DM or something. Yeah, y'all yeah. make sure y'all definitely tap in, man. Follow he he giving out a lot of um free game on Twitter, man. So y'all make sure y'all follow yeah, him on Twitter there too, man. Yeah, follow him. And before we wrap up, y'all can follow me on all platforms on Instagram. I'm at the official Xavier Miller and everything else. I'm at Xavier C. Miller. And this is all I got for y'all on this episode of Man of Mindsets Podcast. See you guys next episode. Peace.
Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, it's every y'all gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouching Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant